Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to the Suburban Rifleman. Uh, it's been a while. I know that uh, I'm currently a man without a country. Uh, my membership at the gun club that I belong to for the last 25 years or so has lapsed, and I'm currently in the process of joining a new club, so I haven't been able to do any shooting in a while. Uh, but I have been contacted by a couple of different uh, manufacturers uh, looking for me to uh, review some of their products. And one of the most recent is a company called Redwin. I was not familiar with Redwin before. Uh, they're an optics manufacturer. They're located in uh, Wuhan, China. And uh, they contacted me out of the blue and asked me if I'd be willing to take a look at one of their scopes. Um, so certainly... I'll be doing a shooting review of this scope eventually, but I wanted to take an initial look at it. Uh, I'm up here at camp, uh, so no shooting anyway, but uh, it's it's a pretty impressive looking optic. And I just wanted to show you what you can get nowadays. Um, the price point on this scope is very, very reasonable. I think it's just less than $100. And the optical quality of this scope is just amazing uh, for the price. So. Anyway, um, this is a one to. This is their Torero uh, scope. It's a one to six by twenty four with an illuminated reticle. Um, it's got a range finding uh, reticle in it. Uh, there, I think there are two different options. There's one uh, reticle available in this scope, which is a, a mill dot, or it, it may be graduated in, in, uh, mill rads, but it's a, a fairly standard crosshair with, with dot sub tensions, uh, going both vertically and horizontally. And it also has an illuminated dot in the middle. Uh, I didn't choose that one because the, the illuminated dot is only, I think a third of a minute of angle. It's very, very fine. And it would be good if you were uh, shooting at longer range. Um, I chose this reticle because it has, I think, a one minute of angle uh, dot in the middle. So pretty standard packaging. Let's take a look at the scope. It's in a fairly substantial cardboard box. Um, first of all, you get your scope. Now there are uh, a number of different options as far as mounts. All of these Redwind optics come with mounts. Uh, I opted for the one piece mount because uh, I need that uh, forward cantilevered type mount. I want to uh, eventually mount this on an AR-15. Um, it also comes with two piece mounts similar to those found on this uh, scope here. So you get your scope already mounted in the mount, although I will almost certainly be re- uh, mounting that once I put it on a rifle. Um, there's a box in here. We've got a, uh, a uh, fast adjust or quick throw lever, which clamps around the uh, power adjustment ring. And I'm, I guess it's a matter of uh, preference. It comes with this, but there's also a socket on the power adjustment ring, a threaded socket here and there is a stud in another bag here there's a small steel stud which will thread into that a couple of other things in this bag which we'll take a look at as well um, so there's a, a quick throw lever that simply th threads into this socket there we go um, so to adjust from one to six power, you can simply throw this over relatively easily. I don't think I have that screwed all the way in there. Probably want to put that in with a little bit of Loctite. Uh, but again, it also comes with this quick throw lever that clamps around the power adjustment ring. There is an Allen key in here, which is presumably for the screws on the power adjustment throw lever. Um, in this bag with the little threaded stud, you also get a plastic tool, which is used for loosening the uh, turret caps. 
uh, for resetting your zero. There's a couple of different slots here uh, to turn that out. And one nice thing that comes with the scope is a honeycomb sunshade. Um, this is something that generally doesn't come with lower budget scopes. It's usually a, a, an aftermarket or a, uh, an accessory that you have to purchase separately. Um, this one's really pretty nicely manufactured, nicely machined. Now, these type of honeycomb sunshades are generally uh, used to uh, conceal the position of the shooter. It's to cut down reflection and glare off of the objective lens so that you can't be so easily spotted. I would like to point out that this does uh, reduce the amount of light coming in through the objective lens, so it does dim your... Uh, your uh, image a little bit through your scope. Um, there's also some kind of sticky little piece of foam. Not sure what that's for. Um, what else do we get in the bag or in the box? Well, this is the bag that the scope was in. Um, there is a manual in here, which is fairly simple. It does talk a little bit about the uh, warranty. There's a five-year VIP warranty. Um, One-time free accidental damage repair service includes accidental water damage and drop damage. So uh, looks like they have fairly good customer support. Uh, there's a, another key in here. This one's Torx Drive. And that is, yes, it's for the uh, rings on the one-piece mount. And a little bit of swag. That's always a nice addition, a Red Wing, Red Wing uh, Velcro patch with a sew-on backer. You can stick that on your range bag or your shooting jacket or whatever. And a microfiber cloth. So... Everything uh, that you could pretty much want is in here, with one notable exception. I don't know if it's just an oversight in uh, the packing department at Red Wind, or maybe it's just not included. But I've never seen a, a, a scope with an illuminated reticle before um, that didn't come with a battery. Um, this is a fairly standard button-type battery. It's the CR whatever, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, their website does tell you which battery you need uh, for this, but it didn't come with the scope, which is a little bit strange, but those batteries are cheap. So looking at the scope itself, I'm impressed uh, with the machining and the construction of it. Uh, it seems to be very, very nicely done. I'm not real crazy about the logo on the turret cap, and there's also the logo and name over here on the side of the ocular bell. Um, you can purchase these from Redwin with no logos and no, uh, no name, which is kind of nice. Um, obviously, when they sent me a free one, they want you to see the logo, so that's what I got. If I were opting to buy this, I would probably buy it without the logo, um, just because I I like a less cluttered look on my scope, um, but it's a free scope. I'm not complaining about that. Um, the knobs adjust in half minute of angle per one click. Uh, The clicks are fairly positive and solid. Not the clickiest clicks I've ever heard, but you can definitely feel them. And uh, they should work just fine. The turrets lock simply by pulling, well, they unlock. When you pull them out, you can adjust and to lock them down, you simply push them in and they lock very positively. Um, the illumination control is over here where your parallax adjustment knob would normally be on a scope with adjustable parallax. This scope does not have that. 
and it looks like it illuminates in both red and green. Those are very, very positive clicks. But again, I don't have a battery, so I can't show you what the illumination looks like. Um, the thing that really strikes me about this scope right off the bat, and of course I haven't had a chance to shoot it yet, uh, is the image quality. Um, Chinese manufactured optics have really come a long way in just a, a very short period of time. Only, I think, about six or eight years ago, I purchased this Nico Sterling Target Master. It's another low-power variable optic of relatively similar size. It's a little bit longer. It does have a one-inch tube, whereas the Redwind Torero has a 30-millimeter tube. Uh, that's definitely better for light transmission. And the objective lens on this Nico Sterling is only 20 millimeters, whereas on the Red Wing Torero, it's 24 millimeters. But the difference, and this was not a cheap scope. Nico Sterling's not a really high-end optics manufacturer, but they have several tiers. And the Target Master is pretty much top tier for Nico Sterling. Um, this has more or less standard definition glass in it. Um, it's got a half mil dot uh, reticle in it. And again, just a one inch tube. But the difference in light transmission between this scope, which costs $250, and this 30 millimeter scope, which is new and costs about $95, there's absolutely no comparison. This is so much brighter and so much clearer. The Nico Sterling, uh, and I'll throw in some footage uh, taken through the scopes. It's not going to be the best in the world because I'm working with my iPhone uh, up here. I don't have a lot of video equipment with me, but uh, I think you'll be able to get a pretty good idea. Uh, the, first of all, the, the eye box on this Nico Sterling is very tight. And the field of view maybe takes up 66% of the black circle. The Torero has a much wider field of view and the field, the eye box is much more forgiving. It's not super tight. And your image basically takes up the entirety of this black circle. And this is HD glass, I believe. And there's really no distortion or chromatic shift all the way out to the edge of the... It's a very slight amount of yellowing, a little bit of chromatic shift at the very periphery of the field of view. Um, but it's really, really minimal. And the, uh, the image through this scope is really very, very impressive. So um, this is just an initial first look. I continue to be amazed uh, on a almost month by month basis at the improvement. It's kind of scary actually, as, a, as, a, uh, as an American uh, working at least part-time in a manufacturing uh, facility, it's really, really scary how well the Chinese are improving their products. And I don't want to get into a political discussion about whether or not they're stealing our technology. Obviously, we're manufacturing a lot of stuff in China. You know, they're, they're gleaning a lot of information from us on how to make a better product. And it's amazing how in a period of maybe six or eight years, this was, as Chinese products go, the Nico Sterling was was a pretty top of the line uh, product eight years ago. And I mean, it's still a good scope. I'm not throwing it in the trash, but it's nowhere near the quality of this Redwind. And when you take into account that this scope can be had for about 90 bucks, give or take a few dollars, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure if they charge shipping or not. A lot of these manufacturers have free shipping. But even if you've got to pay five, 10 bucks shipping, you're getting an awful lot of scope. At least my initial impression is you're getting an awful lot of scope. You've got 
Uh, great light gathering, great light transmission, great optics. Is it the best scope I've ever looked through? No. I mean, it's not a Swarovski. It's not a Zeiss. But it's also just a tiny fraction of the cost of a scope like that. So uh, I'm very much looking forward to shooting this, uh, getting it on uh, mounted on an AR and taking it out to the range and shooting it. As soon as I have a range to go shooting at, that should be happening in the next three or four weeks. So hopefully I'll be back to making shooting videos soon. And when I do, I hope to see each of you here then. Later, guys.